I think you told us, Mr. Herr. Page 231, you said this. President Biden had strong motivations. That's a key word. We're getting the motive now. President Biden had strong motivations to ignore the proper procedures for safeguarding the classified information in his notebooks. Why did he have strong motivations? Because, next word, because he decided months before leaving office to write a book. To write a book, that was his motive. He knew the rules, he broke them because he was writing a book. And you further say, and he began meeting with the ghostwriter while he was still vice president. There's the motive. Mr. Herr, how much did President Biden get paid for his book? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure if that information appears in the report. It sure does. There's a dollar amount in there. You remember? I, I don't. It, it may be eight million. If eight that's million added. dollars. Joe Biden had eight million reasons to break the rules. Took classified information and shared it with the guy who was writing the book. That's why he did. He knew the rules, but he broke them for eight million dollars in a book advance. But you know what? It wasn't just the money. Joe Biden, here's this, this page 231, very next page. Joe Biden, in your report, Joe Biden viewed his notebooks as an irreplaceable, contemporaneous record of the most important moments of his vice presidency. He'd written this all down for the book, for the $8 million. And the next thing you say in your report is, quote, such a record would buttress his legacy as a world leader. You know what this is? It wasn't just the money. It wasn't just $8 million. It was also his ego. Pride and money is why he knowingly violated the rules. The oldest motives in the book, pride and money. You agree with that, Mr. Herr? You wrote it in your report. That language, and it does appear in the report, and we did identify evidence supporting those, uh, those assessments. You also had another interesting statement in your report. You said Joe Biden... I want to make sure I get this right. Viewed himself as a man of presidential timber. Remember that statement, Mr. Herr? I believe that does appear in the report, at least in the executive summary. I think this is interesting. Because here's the scary part. Page 200. I said this earlier in my opening statement. Page 200. Joe Biden, this is a quote, Joe Biden risked serious damage to America's national security when he shared information with his ghostwriter shared it with his ghostwriter, the guy who was helping Joe Biden get $8 million. And oh, by the way, Mr. Herr, what did that ghostwriter do with the information Joe Biden shared with him on his laptop? What did he do after you were named special counsel? Chairman, if you're referring to the audio recordings that Mr. Zwanitzer created of his conversations with exactly Biden, what I'm referring to. He, he uh, he slid, if I remember correctly, uh, he slid those files into his uh, recycle bin on his computer. Tried to, tried to destroy the evidence, didn't he? Correct. The very guy who was helping Joe Biden get the $8 million, the $8 million Joe Biden had used, w w the motive for Joe Biden to, to disclose classified information, to retain classified information, which he definitely knew was against the law. When you get named special counsel, what's that guy do? He destroys the evidence. That's the key takeaway in my mind. That's the key takeaway. I yield back. The gentleman from uh, Georgia is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Herr, you've led a distinguished career, earning your law degree from Stanford University, and you served as a student um, as executive editor of the Stanford Law Review, correct? Correct. Then you went on to clerk for Judge Kaczynski of the Ninth Circuit, correct? Yes, sir. After that, you ascended to a clerkship with then Chief Justice William Rehnquist on the United States Supreme Court, correct? Correct. And then you later joined the Daddy Bush Department of Justice as a special assistant to known Federalist Society member and now FBI Director Christopher Wray. Isn't that correct? I did spend some time working for former Assistant Attorney General Christopher Wray. And you later joined uh, the... Um, Trump Justice Department as the principal associate deputy attorney general working as the right-hand man for another known Federalist Society member, Rod Rosenstein. Isn't that correct? I served as Mr. Rosenstein's principal deputy. And then Donald Trump appointed you to serve as U.S. attorney for the District of Maryland. Is that correct? 
President Trump nominated me to serve in that position, and I was and unanimously in, confirmed by the United States Senate. That's correct. And thereafter, Attorney General Merrick Garland appointed you to serve as special counsel for the United States Department of Justice to conduct a full and thorough investigation of certain matters to determine whether or not Joseph Biden should be charged with unlawfully removing and retaining classified documents. Isn't that correct? Correct. And nowhere in that order does Attorney General Garland authorize you to conduct an investigation and issue a report on whether President Biden is mentally fit to serve as president. Isn't that correct? That does not appear in the appointment order. And pursuant to your appointment to conclude your investigation, you issued a report that was published by Attorney General Garland, correct? Uh, he made it available to Congress, sir. And your report concluded that after a full and thorough investigation, the evidence was insufficient to establish that uh, President Biden had willfully retained classified documents. Isn't that correct? My judgment was that based on the, st the state of the evidence, um, a conviction at trial was not the probable outcome. And you determined that there was no evidence of willful retention because each time classified documents were discovered to be in the president's possession, the White House notified the National Archives right away, the Biden legal team, and the White House fully cooperated with the National Archives uh, during the investigation. Once the DOJ opened the investigation, President Biden and his personal counsel fully cooperated. Isn't that correct? We did, we did identify some evidence of willful retention and disclosure, but we but also the point noted is, though, that the president cooperated fully with you. And didn't uh, President, uh, I mean, they never tried to hide any documents from you, did they? The report does note steps of cooperation taken by the president. Thank you, sir. And last but not least, unlike in the Trump classified documents case, President Biden's counsel never falsely certified that there was no classified documents in the president's possession, correct? The report does include some, some comparisons and contrasts between the facts alleged in the Trump case and the Biden case. Despite clearing President Biden from being prosecuted, you used your report to trash and smear President Biden because he said in, res in response to questions over a five-hour interview that he didn't recall how he got the documents. And you knew that that would play into the Republicans' narrative that the president is unfit for office because he's senile. And the American people saw during the State of the, of the Union address that that was not true. But yet, that's what you tried to offer to them, and that's why they are ha having you here today, so that they can expand upon that narrative. And you knew that that's what was going to happen, didn't you? Congressman, I reject the suggestions well, me, that you let, have just well, made. Well, that is well, not what me, happened. Let me move on. Partisan politics you are, you no are a part member, whatsoever in you my are, work. You are a my member of the Federalist Society, are you not? And fair. Are you a member of the Federalist Society? I am not a member of the Federalist Society. But you are a Republican, though, aren't you? I am a registered Republican. Yes, sir. And you're doing everything you can do to get President Trump reelected so that you can get appointed as a federal judge or perhaps <laughs> to another position in the Department of Justice. Isn't that correct? Congressman, I have no such aspirations, I can assure you. And I can tell you that partisan politics had no place whatsoever in my work. It had no place in the, in the investigative steps that I took. It had no place in the decision that I made. And it had no place in a single word of my report. Thank you, sir. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida. Five minutes. February 8th, the White House. Question, Mr. President, why did you share classified information with your ghostwriter? The President. I did not share classified information. I did not share it. I guarantee I did not. That's not true, is it, Mr. Herr? That is inconsistent with the findings based on the evidence in, in my report. Yes, yeah, so it's a lie. It's just what regular people would say, right? <laughs> yeah, all right. So the next one. And all the stuff that was in my home was in filing cabinets that were either locked or able to be locked. That wasn't true either, was it? That was inconsistent with the findings of our investigation. Another lie, people might say, right? Because 
What you put in your report was, among the places Mr. Biden's lawyers found classified documents in the garage was a damaged open box. So here's what I'm, what I'm understanding, right? As Mr. Armstrong laid out, you find in your report that the elements of a federal criminal violation are met. But then you apply this senile cooperator theory that because Joe Biden cooperated and the elevator doesn't go to the top floor, you don't think you get a conviction. And I actually think you get to the right answer in that. I don't think Biden should have been charged. Don't think Trump should have been charged. But under the, like the senile cooperator theory, isn't it frustrating that Biden continues to go out and lie about the basic facts of the report that lay out a federal criminal violation? Congressman, I need to disagree with at least one thing that you said, which is that I found that the, the, all of the elements were met. One of the elements of the relevant mishandling statute is the intent element, and what my report reflects is my judgment that, based on the evidence, I would not be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury that that intent element had been Right, met. but the reason you have that doubt is the, is the senile cooperator theory, the fact that Joe Biden is so inept in responding that you can't prove the intent, which again, I don't quibble with that conclusion, but it's frustrating to be like, oh, well, this guy's not getting treated the same way as Trump because the elevator's not going to the top floor, so we can't prove intent, while at the same time, Biden goes out there at the White House and says, well, you know, he just, he just, he just blatantly lies. And what I'm trying to figure out is whether or not Biden's lying because he's still so senile, he hasn't read your report, or whether it's a little craftier and a little more devious and perhaps a little more intentional than we might otherwise think. So I also want to go to this Biden Penn Center. Like, did, you, did it give concern to you that the Biden Penn Center, where all this classified stuff was being mishandled, was being floated by foreign governments? Congressman, we were concerned with getting to the bottom of all of the classified documents that were recovered during the course of yeah, our... Yeah, but the, like, what bothers me is that the money that was paying for the place where the documents were being inappropriately held, it was the Chinese and it was other foreign countries. Did, did that play into your analysis? Did you, did you look into the billion dollars in foreign funding sources at the Biden Center at UPenn, for example? Congressman, we conducted a thorough, impartial, and fair investigation, and we were very, very concerned with getting to the bottom of all the relevant questions relating to the recovered Sir, documents. did you look into the fact that the Chinese were floating the place where this guy was keeping the documents unsecure? Yes or no? Congressman, to the extent that we identified evidence that was relevant and significant to our investigation, we put it in our report. Okay, well, it seemed relevant to me, maybe not to you. Another thing that seemed relevant to me is this ghostwriter, right? So the ghostwriter, purposefully deletes this evidence that seems to be like show culpability of Biden's crimes and you don't charge him. Why did you not charge the ghostwriter with obstructing justice and deleting evidence? Well, for a number of reasons that are laid out in the report, but in brief, Congressman, yes, uh, when, we, when we interviewed the ghostwriter, he did tell us, and I'm trying to get the exact language, that one of the things on his mind, one of the things he was aware of, was that I had been appointed special counsel and was conducting an investigation. Right, so, so, so he didn't, just so everybody knows, the ghostwriter didn't delete the recordings just as a matter of happenstance. Ghostwriter has recordings of Biden making admissions of, of, of crimes. He then learns that you've been appointed. He then deletes the information that is the evidence, and you don't charge him. That is reflected in the report, and one of the reasons... Like, what does somebody have to do to get charged with obstruction of justice by you? If, like, if, like deleting the evidence of crimes doesn't count, what would meet the standard? So, Congressman, as we, as we uh, state in the relevant chapter of the report, one of the things that Mr. Zwanitzer did not delete was transcripts of the recordings that he had created that included inculpatory evidence relating to Mr. Biden. Oh, so if you, if you destroy some evidence but not other evidence that somehow absolves you of the evidence you destroy? He, like, here's what I see. Zwaniger should have been charged, wasn't. Biden and Trump should have been treated equally. They weren't. And that is the double standard that I think a lot of Americans are concerned about. I see my time's expired. I yield back. The uh, gentleman from California is recognized. Mr. Chair, I want to ask you about some of the differences between the facts involving President Biden and President Trump. But before I do, I want to refer back to your opening statement in which you said that you did not disparage the president, your report, but of course, you did disparage the president. Uh, you disparaged him in terms you had to know would have a maximal political impact. You understood your report would be public, right? I understood, based on comments that the attorney general had made, that he had committed to make as much of my report public as consistent with legal policy and uh, legal requirements. 
And you could have chosen just to comment on the president's particular recall vis-a-vis -a, -vis a document or a set of documents, but you decided to go further and make a generalized statement about his memory, didn't you? Congressman, I could have written my report, theoretically, in a way that omitted references to the president's memory, but that would have been an incomplete and improper report, and that, that it did not reflect my, question, my analysis you could have written, explanation of my decision. You could have written your report general. with his with comments about his specific recollection as to documents or a set of documents, but you chose a general pejorative reference to the president. You understood when you made that decision, didn't you, Mr. Herr, that you would ignite a political firestorm with that language, didn't you? Congressman, politics played no part whatsoever in my investigative steps. But you understood decision, nevertheless, the words didn't that you, I Mr. Herr? Mr. Herr, you, you, you cannot tell me you're so naive as to, to think your words would not have created a political firestorm. You understood that, didn't you, when you wrote those words, when you decided to include those words, when you decided to go beyond specific references to documents? You understood how they would be manipulated by, by my colleagues here on the GOP side of the aisle and by President Trump. You understood that, did you not? Congressman, what I understood is the regulations that govern my conduct as special counsel. And, and those regulations, regulations those regulations... Me to write a confidential report for the Attorney General... Which you knew would not be confidential. My decision, and that is what knew, I did, Congressman. Mr. I followed you, the rules. You knew it knew would not be confidential. followed them. You knew it would not be confidential, didn't you? Sir, the regulations required me to write a confidential report re explaining my decision to the Attorney General. Which you knew would be released. It was up to the Attorney General which to you, determine you understood what it would be released. Did you would not? be released consistent with you, DOJ policy. You understood it would be released. You understood it would be released. I understood you? from the Attorney General's public comments that he would make as much of my report public as he could consistent with legal requirements in DOJ policy. And you policy. also understand DOJ policy that you are to take care not to prejudice the interests of the subject of an investigation, right? That is generally one of the interests that DOJ policy requires that prosecutors respect. And it was your obligation to follow that policy in this report, was it not? It was also my obligation to write a confidential report for the Attorney General explaining completely well, my what decision. What you did write was deeply prejudicial to the interests <laughs> of the President. You say it wasn't political, and yet you must have understood you must have understood the impact of your words. You must have understood the impact of your decision to go beyond the specifics of a particular document, to go to the very general, to your own personal, prejudicial, subjective opinion of the president, one you knew would be amplified by his political opponent, one you knew that would influence a political campaign. You had to understand that. And you did it anyway. And you did it anyway. And, and, and let me just go... Let me just go to some of the differences here between the president's conduct and Mr. Trump's. In the superseding indictment, uh, on page three, it says that Mr. Trump suggested that his attorney falsely represent to the FBI and grand jury that he did not have documents called for by the grand jury subpoena. You didn't find anything like that with respect to Mr. Biden, did you? Congressman, I do not have the Trump indictment in front of me, but I need to address something that you said in your prior question. What you are suggesting is that I needed to provide a different version of my report that would be fit for public release. That is nowhere in the rules. I was to prepare a confidential report that was comprehensive and thorough of an... What is in the rules, the Mr. General. Herr, what is in the rules is you don't gratuitously do things to prejudice the subject of an investigation when you're declining to prosecute. You don't gratuitously add language that you know will be useful in a political campaign. You were not born yesterday. You understood exactly what you were doing. It was a choice. You certainly didn't have to include that language. You could have said vis-a-vis -vis the documents that were found at the university. The president did not recall. There is nothing more common. You know this. I know this. There is nothing more common with a witness of any age when asked about events that are years old to say, I do not recall. Indeed, they're instructed by their attorney to do that if they have any question about it. You understood that. You made a choice. That was a political choice. It was the wrong choice. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Arizona, did the did, did, uh, special counsel wish to respond to that final question? Y yes, Congressman. What you are suggesting is that I shape, sanitize, um, omit portions of my reasoning and explanation to the Attorney General for political reasons. No, I suggest and, that you and, and, not shape your report the, for political reasons, the which is, is what you did. That did not happen, Congressman. That did not happen. The gentleman from uh, Mr. McClintock, gentleman from California, is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hur. I first want to get this straight. 
Is it now okay if I uh, take home top secret documents, store them in my garage, and read portions of them to, to friends or associates? Congressman, I, I wouldn't recommend it, but I don't want to entertain any hypotheticals at this well, point. Was it okay? I mean, I, I can do that now under this new doctrine? Again, Congressman, I, I wouldn't recommend that you do that, but um, well, I don't you, want you've, to... you, you, you've essentially said so in your report, uh, and, and certainly it would be exculpatory if I, if I simply told you, hey, I'm, I'm getting old, I don't remember stuff the way I used to. Congressman, I'm not here to get into hypotheticals. I'm here to talk about the facts and the work that I did. It was not a hypothetical. This is the issue at hand. Uh, you, you, you correctly noted in your report that uh, former presidents and other senior officials have been given wide latitude in their possession of classified information. And I believe your decision to, to pro, not to prosecute Biden uh, for the same offense is consistent with that precedent. But the, the problem is... That precedent changed with the administration's decision to prosecute Donald Trump. And the irony is that as president, Trump had full discretion over handling uh, classified material and, and full discretion in deciding which records to retain. As a senator or vice president, Joe Biden didn't have that. So now we get to this glaring double standard. I think it would be toxic to the rule of law on its face if it was just two ordinary citizens. But the fact that the only person being prosecuted for this offense happens to be the president's political opponent makes this an unprecedented assault on our democracy. This is the worst we could expect from a banana republic. And I wonder how you square this. Congressman, I do address, as I was required to as a prosecutor, uh, a relevant precedent in the form of the alleged, the allegations and the indictment against former President Trump. I set forth my explanation and my assessment and comparison of those precedents in my report, and I am not here to comment any further be, uh, well, beyond well, what's in my you, report. Well, you said, for example, that, that um, uh, 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 there, there was no evidence beyond reasonable doubt. Well, you got the fact that he had classified material in his possession and control in multiple settings for multiple years, that he told others he was aware of this, and that he shared that material with others. The mind boggles at what beyond reasonable doubt would actually mean? Well, as I set forth in, at length in my uh, explanations in chapters 11 and 12 of the report, my assessment is that the evidence, if presented at trial, alongside potential defense arguments, would not probably result in a conviction at well, trial. Well, that's one of the points you make, is that President Biden's likely to be an elderly, sympathetic uh, a figure with a poor memory. But how does that bear on any individual's guilt or innocence? Is, isn't that, again, a question for a judge or jury to decide after guilt or innocence is, is, is determined? It is. Uh, and, and again, here's the problem. Donald Trump's being prosecuted for exactly the same act that you've documented that Joe Biden committed. Congressman, uh if I understood your question correctly, you said, isn't that a question for a jury? And it most certainly, in the, through the lens well, of... My, my question is, does that bear on the guilt or innocence of an individual? It certainly bears on how a jury is going to receive and perceive and make decisions. So the answer to my evidence. earlier question is correct. All I have to do when I'm caught taking home uh, classified materials to say, I I'm sorry, Mr. Herbert, but I'm getting old. My memory's not so great. Congressman, I, this I have, is the doctrine that you've established in our laws now, and it's frightening. Congressman, my intent is certainly not to establish any sort of doctrine. I had a particular task. I have a particular set of evidence to consider and make a judgment with respect to one particular set of evidence, and that is what I did. Well, Mr. Herr, here's, here's the fine point of the matter. The, the foundation of our justice system is equal justice under law. That's what give the law its, its respect and its legitimacy. And, and without it, the law is simply force, devoid of any moral authority. Justice is depicted as blindfolded for, for this very reason. It doesn't matter who comes before her. All are treated equally. You destroy this foundation, and, and the rule of law becomes a sick mockery. It becomes a weapon to wield against political rivals and, and a tool of despotism. And I am desperately afraid that uh, this decision of the Department of Justice is, is now crossed a, a very bright line. And I yield back. What I did was assess the evidence and the facts that I obtained in this investigation and make a judgment based on this set of evidence. Fair enough. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Washington for five minutes.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Special Counsel Her, thank you for being here. Thank you for your work. In your investigation, you reviewed more than 7 million documents and conducted 173 interviews of 147 witnesses, including President Biden. Is that correct? Yes, Congresswoman. And your 15-month investigation cost several million dollars and resulted in a comprehensive 345-page report with several dozen pages of appendices. Is it correct that, as it says in the first sentence of your executive summary, that your investigation concluded with an assessment that, quote, no criminal charges are warranted in this matter? Correct. So this lengthy, expensive, and independent investigation resulted in a complete exoneration of President Joe Biden. For every document you discussed in your report, you found insufficient evidence that the president violated any laws about possession or retention of classified materials. The primary law that you analyzed for potential prosecution was part of the Espionage Act, 18 U.S.C. 793E, which criminalizes willful retention or disclosure of national defense information. Is that correct? Congresswoman, that is one statute that we analyzed. I need to um, go back and, and make sure that I take, take note of the word that you used, uh, exoneration. That Mr. is not a word Kerr, that I'm gonna in the report, that's not part of my task as I'm a gonna prosecutor. I'm going to continue with my questions. I know that, that, I that the term... I ultimately reached I know that whether the term, sufficient evidence existed such that the likely you outcome you, you exonerated would be a conviction. Him. I know that I the term willful him. retention report, has a... Mr. Hurd, it's my time. Thank you. I know that the term willful retention has a particular legal meaning, and I want to make sure that that meaning is absolutely clear to the American people before we go any further. As you wrote in your report, to prove as a matter of law that the president, quote, willfully retained any documents, you would need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt two elements. First, that the president knowingly retained or disclosed national defense information, and second, that he knew that this conduct was unlawful. Is that correct? That's correct. And to be very, oh, and, and very... I'm sorry, Congressman, that it was national defense information. That's an important third element. Okay, thank you. To be very, very clear, you did not find sufficient evidence to prove either of those elements beyond a reasonable doubt to show that Mr. Biden willfully retained any of the classified national defense materials that were recovered during your investi investigation, correct? My conclusion was that the admissible evidence was not sufficient to make conviction at trial a probable outcome. Not sufficient. Thank you. Let me ask you about a few specific examples so the American people are clear. One, side, uh, one set of documents was discovered by investigators in the president's Delaware home. His staff had assembled those documents into binders in 2014 to prepare him for an event with Charlie Rose. Some of the documents in those binders were marked classified. You reviewed all of the facts surrounding the classified documents in those binders, and you determined, and this is a quote from your report, these facts do not support a conclusion that Mr. Biden willfully retained the marked classified documents in, this, in these binders, correct? That language does appear in the report. You also reviewed another set of classified documents from the president's home related to the Afghanistan troop surge in 2009, and you evaluated whether the president willfully retained such documents in his Delaware home or a home that he rented in Virginia in 2017. In your report, you said that there was, quote, a shortage of evidence, end quote, for any wrongdoing, and quote, uh, other innocent explanations for the documents that we cannot refute, end quote. Are those quotes correct? Congresswoman, if you have particular page sites for those quotations, I'd be happy to confirm their page accuracy. Six. It's right up on the screen. With respect to the two quotes that are on the screen, uh, in addition to this shortage of evidence, there are other innocent explanations for documents we cannot refute, and we, can, we conclude the evidence is not sufficient to convict, and we decline to recommend prosecution. I was just going to get to that, and you concluded that, those quote, the evidence is not sufficient to convict, and we decline to recommend prosecution, end quote. Those are your words in the report, correct? Those words appear in the report. Thank you. President Biden's counsel discovered a different set of documents at the Penn Biden Center and voluntarily turned them over to the FBI. Those documents contain national security information, but you determined that you could not, in fact, prove that President Biden willfully retained those documents because, quote, the evidence suggests that the marked classified documents found at the Penn Biden Center were sent and kept there by mistake. Therefore, we decline, we decline any criminal charges related to those documents, end quote, correct? The language, we decline any criminal charges related to those documents, does appear at page 311 of the report. Thank you. You also reached a similar conclusion regarding the documents found in President Biden's Senate papers at the University of Delaware. Quote, for these reasons, it is likely that the few classified documents found in Mr. Biden's Senate papers at the University of Delaware were there by mistake. Correct? 
That language does appear at page 325 of the report. So it seems to me that the crux of the report, the main story, is that you found insufficient evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that <laughs> President Biden willfully retained any classified materials. That is the story of this report. And I yield back, Mr. Pre uh, Mr. Chairman.